having an opportunity to create work that's going to be permanently installed in the lobby of One World Trade Center is a remarkable experience and a dream come true for me uh, for so many reasons. First of all, I love this city. Well, I can say that it's been an extraordinary year last year. Uh, I started with uh, some, you know, a gallery show or two. Suddenly, I, it, it got to be kind of fun. I would wake up in the morning and check my emails and there would be invitations from museums and other galleries asking to talk with me or uh, invitations to show my work and suddenly my calendar got very full. I am literally dancing and swimming in the paint when I make these paintings and uh, I'm very alive when I'm making these paintings and I'm almost always joyful. I mean I'm, I'm not trying to express a, uh, a short emotional feeling. I'm not trying to express how I'm feeling, you know, I woke up this morning and I'm depressed and I want to express that. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm... As music changed and there was the invention of the microphone, all of a sudden you hear Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra. You heard these singers almost whispering in your ear. Music became very intimate. And that's what I'm trying to do with my painting. I want my paintings to connect with the viewer in a very intimate, close way, but also in, the, in that grand way. So when you first see the painting from a distance, you're getting the, the gestalt of it, and it's, it's a very big, unified experience. But because I have made these monumental gestures, you feel inside the painting. I wanted to integrate my paintings with the building both from a conceptual standpoint and also from a design standpoint. The building smartly is tapered as it rises up and points to the sky and it actually reflects the sky as a symbol of hope. So I look to the sky uh, for inspiration for the two paintings that I'm making. Additionally, I looked at paintings by Frederick Edwin Church, one of the founders of the Hudson River School. The mouth of the Hudson River is just outside the building here. And he made these glorious paintings of skies. And so I was not trying to depict the sky, but I was trying to use the experience or uh, the feeling of a hopeful, positive sky. One of the paintings is a morning feeling. The, the colors and the form are the feeling of a hopeful, positive morning, while the other painting is more toward the end of a day, an evening, moonlit, calming sky. And so there's sort of a story or a narrative going on. many, many paintings and I've been pretty successful and I have experience making these so I came in with a very high expectation that they would succeed and I made hundreds of sketches and studies and prototypes of these paintings just practicing for, for this event. But of course, I've never made a painting close to being this size and that's a whole new set of um, engineering challenges, chemistry challenges, and physical challenges for me. So, um, but I mean, every time, every painting I do, I'm, I'm really pushing my materials as far as I can and, you know, testing my materials and testing myself and my own physicality and I'm testing myself conceptually. I, I'm pushing myself all the time. I don't want to stay in one place. So, um, this, is, uh, this was a, a significant challenge for me and um, I feel really good about the end result. You know, life is moving. The opposite of life is stillness. I want these paintings to be dynamic and to be colorful and bright and, and leave you with a very positive feeling and to jar you out of your everyday life and to stop and be very present and to and to feel hopeful that you know this is a new day and anything is possible or the highest 
achievement is possible.